Watford got a cannon in the middle of a roundabout. What is that doing here? Can you tell me a bit more about that? Yes, it's a good question. It's not something you'd expect to see at a town centre, is it? Not really, it was, no. It was actually captured uh, from the Russians at Sepastopol oh, wow. in, in, in the Crimean War. Uh, and a lot of local men fought in that war. And um, one of them, a trooper by the name of Piercy, used to write home to his father giving graphic descriptions oh. of the conditions that the, the men had to endure. And I think we, we know the conditions mm. were pretty difficult for them. Imagine. And uh, so his dad thought it would be a really good idea to have a, a proper memorial to their sacrifice and their, and their suffering. So we arranged a public subscription and they bought this cannon. Wow. And, uh, brought it here to the original Retford Market Square. This, oh, this, this, was, this was the original Square, town right. centre before oh, they built okay. the main square down there. And so it then became called Cannon Square. Right, even and though it's not square. That's right, yeah. <laughs> And there it is. And if there is one symbol of Retford, it's the cannon. Perfect. <laughs> and it's got a beautiful building in the background. What's that church? St Swithin's Church, uh, the, uh, the civic church where uh, uh, all the uh, civic ceremonies and you know, services are, are held, sometimes called the, uh, the Cathedral Church of North Nottinghamshire. Have you heard oh, it right. called that? Probably I it's, it's I now, it's, it, it, no. it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but you get the idea it's that it's, church, it's, a, it? it's an impressive yeah. place. And it looks pretty solid now, yeah. but uh, in Oliver Cromwell's time, that big square tower collapsed. Oh, no and although he wasn't very favourably disposed towards churches, we can't really blame him for that because it came down in a big storm right. and damaged uh, the, uh, the chancel and the south transept that you can see there. Right. But they did some repairs pretty quickly because by the time of the uh, restoration of the monarchy, a, a, a large part of it had been rebuilt. And then, of course, in Victorian times, oh, like in common it, with yeah. lots of uh, churches, it was uh, reimagined and, and, and rebuilt. So a lot of what you see, I mean, the style is very much 15th century, yeah. but a lot of what you see is, is Victorian oh, with right. one or two bits of, uh, of older than that, you know, uh, so what medieval does it glass. what originally date to then, that church? 1258. 1258. So it's uh, coming up 800 years old. Yeah. So it was around during the time of the Pilgrim Fathers? Yep, absolutely. Wow. And uh, the uh, minister there at, at, at the time, the vicar there, was uh, kind of involved with the, that movement, but decided he was going to stay put rather than, uh, than uh, go off to America. He thought Retford was a good place to stay, and uh, we think he was right. Yeah, I'm glad they did. <laughs> Yeah. So this is a bit of a hidden gem tucked away down this little street. Can you tell me a bit more about this building? Yes, I can, I can Laura, and a hidden gem is a very good way of describing it. It was uh, somebody's home uh, oh. at one time. Um, it now. It's, the... it's the Denman Public Library. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, those... Uh, rather impressive cast iron railings up the top there will give you the idea that the person who lived here was actually a rather important uh, person. Who were the Denman family? Well, um, they were just a well-known uh, Retford family uh, who contributed a lot to the town. Uh, the, the particular Denman referred to there was uh, Thomas Hersey Denman, who was a local solicitor and philanthropist. Uh, he'd also been a mayor of Retford, actually, so that gives you some idea of the prominence of the, of the family. And uh, nearly a hundred years ago now, in, in 1926, he decided that the town was short of a library. And uh, originally he thought a, a museum and an art gallery would be quite nice as well. But, uh, so he gifted his house to the town wow. to establish this library. And uh, there it is. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But it's... Uh, a more historic building than, than your average public library, isn't it? It looks like it's closed at the moment. Why is that? Well, uh, it, it, there's been a, a, a lengthy refurbishment which started in the autumn of 2019 oh. uh, and it was, uh, of course, halted by or interrupted by the coronavirus pandemic. Oh, yeah. But uh, I gather it's, uh, you know, as we speak, it's quite close to reopening again now. So, uh, and when it does, uh, it'll be hugely important because it's not just a place where you take books out. It's, it's a, to my mind, it's a vital part of Retford's educational and cultural and social life. You know, there's all sorts of things happen. There's mm. a here. There's a 
there's computer terminals, there's a meeting room, there's there's literary talks, there's a poetry cafe goes on regularly. You know, it's it's wow, uh, so people. It's a real community oh, there, absolutely, yeah. It's it's uh, it's a very precious thing, really. Super. And uh, you know, when you hear of libraries closing down all around the country, and we've still got ours, and not only have we got it, but it's flourishing. You it know, is, it's yeah, uh, it's good. <laughs> So this road now is one way because of the coronavirus and social yeah, distancing yeah. and it seems really busy. Has it always been this busy, this part of town? Well, it's, it's been a bit busy now because of, it's less busy now because of coronavirus, but I mean years ago there used to be traffic jams here, a couple of hundred years ago. Wow. There were traffic jams of carriages and horses down here oh, fantastic. because this road was the Great North Road. It was the main road from London to York and off to, to Edinburgh. Is that what that signpost is It certainly about, is. Then? That's to tell the carriages, the right. people on their journey, on the long journey, tell them how far they've got to go. How they measure 140 and a half, I'm not quite sure. No, the but half is very specific, very isn't specific, it? Very yeah. specific, yes. So what, what was this building yeah. then? Was this quite important? That was, it's now called the Herbless. Until recently, that was the White Hart. Oh, right. Which was one, it was the travel lodge of its day in the 1700s. Oh, it was where the coach, the, a lot of the coaches on, and the post horses and everything would stop on the journey from, not from York down to London. They'd stop and they'd right. stay the night, they'd change horses, they'd get a meal, they'd um, have a break and they'd deliver the post or collect the post. Oh, so it was the and post as well? It was, yes. So they, literally. They were, yeah, there were. We're told there were nine, quite often 19 carriages a day would be calling in here. Very really much the busy. very much the motorway service station or the travel lodge of its day. Very busy indeed. So any famous characters that might have stopped here, perhaps? Well, the, the story is Dick Turpin stayed here regularly or called in here and sat um. in the corner sat in the corner sort of looking at the rich people to see who he could attack who later could on down on. the down the road looking for rich pickings Fantastic. whether that's true or not of course nobody of course knows it's true. 100 it's absolutely true. yes so it was just this would have just been a mass of carriages really yes, busy yeah. people in and out of there yeah having their horses changed over on different stages of their journey yeah, absolutely wow Gosh. And we can go for a drink later. Fantastic. Well, we can. There's, there's a really nice the place where the car, the coaches used to go in the yard. Um, we'll go in there later on, but it's it's now an area you can sit and have a drink. But it used oh, to be wow. really busy with the carriages. People would come in, they'd ring a bell, and some of the people would come out and help them get down, and they'd ch have a change of horse. It must have been really smelly. Must but be, you've yeah. still got the old mounting block in there. You've one of the buildings, which I think is now an ale bar, has got the remains of the stables, oh, the wow. wooden screens to separate the horses. It's it's really interesting, and it's all nicely all cobbled and everything. Nice. So people could, when it's open, people could go in in the courtyard, have a nice drink, and see all the original features of I'd the old. I thoroughly recommend it. Yes. Wow, and get a bit of the old atmosphere. Yeah. And imagine all those coach and yeah. horses coming through. And all we're, day we're long. so lucky because for years yeah. it was a bit of a mess. It was derelict and neglected. And a few years ago, some local businessmen spent a lot of money on it. They've done a really good job oh. improving it. It's really something for the town to be proud of. It's great. Fantastic. See you later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in Retford's beautiful Market Square. Some lovely buildings. Can you tell me any more about some of these buildings? Yes, uh, the Market Square is surrounded by original fine Georgian buildings, a lot of which are restaurants and cafes now with outdoor dining. Oh, lovely. And what about the market? I can see all these market stalls. So is it still an active market? Yeah, it's still an active market. There's three market days and also the Market Square is used for remembrance uh, Day, wow. uh, Christmas heritage, market yeah. and yeah. festival and obviously Open Heritage Day yeah. and the Literary yeah. Festival. Yeah, so on um, Memorial Day is obviously that brings into play this beautiful cenotaph that you've got here. Yeah, the cenotaph was built in 1921 and it's uh, not unique but very interesting in that it's got the names of all those fallen since 1914 wow. plus it's got a list of all the major battlefields of world war one and the distances from retford as you'll oh, see up there that is unusual isn't it yes. i've never noticed that yeah. before 
Wow. So that tells you all the diff the distances to the battles. That's yes. really poignant, isn't it? It is, yes. That really brings it home yeah. to you, Absolutely. how real it is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, on Remembrance Day, the square is totally used, isn't it? It's it full. It's quite yes. a sight to see. Yes. Yeah, I can believe it. Yeah. And there's some lovely benches around there. There are. I'm sure we can have a look at those later. Yeah. But can you tell me a bit more about the town hall? This beautiful yes, building not... here yeah. yes. that you've got. I'll let you into a secret now. I actually got married in there. Oh. <laughs> I got married in there eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. so I do know a little bit about yeah. the town hall. <laughs> well, please tell me all about it. Well, we're very proud of it, as you must be too. Mm. <laughs> um, yes, it's a, with its fine French roof and elegant columns and all the stone carvings there there's um, stone an uh, animal heads and the birds yeah. in the tracery there yeah. so a lot to look at <laughs> actually if you can see the two birds on the columns yes, yes. They're the chuffs aren't they they're the chuffs they're the on chuffs. the on them yes. Yeah. yes so why have we got chuffs on there then because know? it's the retford uh, emblem that's right yeah i think it's part of the town um, emblem map. emblem yes it is yeah thing, the two yeah. chuffs and the reason as i understand it they are chuffs which is a seabird is that it was a kind of a trick played on um retford the person who yeah, paid for the design in the first place yes. on the coat of arms and he wanted ravens but the guy who designed it decided to play a bit of a trick on him and called Chuffs, which are seabirds. Down, they're down at Cornwall, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yes, which yes. obviously we don't have any sea too late, too late. in yeah. Redford. Yeah. No. So that's why we have two yeah. Chuffs on the coat of arms and not two <laughs> ravens. Yeah. Right, yeah. Also, the, that was built in 1858. Right. And previously there always has been a, a town hall in Retford and behind us was the original one oh. and the corner of Bridgegate and in the market square and that was built in 50 no 1355 right. uh, and it was there for ages and then in 1755 they had a new one built uh, and a, at the same time or similar time the Great North Road was coming through here. Right. It was right on the corner, caused a whole load of traffic jams, uh, even worse than now. Right. And it was dangerous. Yeah. So eventually they knocked that down and put uh, this one here. So the original one was about where the mushroom is now. Right. Yeah, just yeah. a bit back. So yeah. they basically yeah. moved it yeah. 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 to the edge yeah. of the square yeah. and, and then put the market yeah. there good bit of town planning that was well thought out wasn't it i doubt it <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this is a beautiful building. If you stand back, you can really see how splendid the Majestic Theatre really is. What kind of style is it built um, in? It's an Art Deco style. Oh, wow, I it, love it. It's art. actually typical Art Deco. If you look um, at the sim symmetry of the, of the facade oh. and the three windows um, and straight parallel lines, all features of Art Deco. Oh. Um, and it was uh, designed in 1925 Gosh. by uh, a Nottingham designer, um, Alfred Thraves. Now, he apparently designed other theatres, and there's one in Nottingham, one, one in Skegness, for instance, uh, but this is the only one that's still being used as a theatre. Really? So it's still a working theatre? Yes, yeah. I mean, it has been other things in its time. It was a, a bingo hall at oh, one wow. time. It was a cinema at right. one time. Um, but it was saved by uh, some friends who formed a trust in uh, 1996. Gosh, so it's all so, run by volunteers? Yes, then. it is run by volunteers, yes. So a working theatre, a beautiful Art Deco working theatre run by volunteers in the centre yes, of Yes, yes. Aren't we looking? And ab above the uh, entrance there are two little panels. I don't know whether you've noticed those. Oh. They've got faces on. Oh, right. And yeah. uh, there are two female and two male uh, yeah. on each one. And they represent comedy and tragedy, the sort of things that you would find in a theatre. Wow. Oh yes, you can see there's eight little figures. That's right, just, just above yeah. the entrance. I think when it was original, there was a, a, a glass canopy. Can you see the little marks along the wall underneath the other... Oh, where those lights are? No, uh, a bit lower, below the masks and the, oh, yeah. the picture of the curtains. There's like little 
marks all along oh, the wall. Yeah. And that was a glass canopy, apparently, where people queued Cued. before they came into Gosh. the to the theatre. Wow, how fabulous. I love the windows as well. Yes, the the, and, and the little arches over the tops. Yeah, and the brick. And the brickwork. It's a yes. really beautiful yes. building. It is. Um, and uh, the proscenium arch has got um, lovely ornate plaster work around it and a shield at the top mm. and uh, you know it's just a pleasure to sit there before the shows mm. uh, and also the big mermaids there are some really big life-size mermaids all along the top of the auditorium um, looking down onto the audience so it, it's a very interesting space inside oh, it's I think there are stained glass windows on the way up the stairs mm. and these little toilets and little places up, up, uh, up here uh, they they all have sort of a quaint feel to them, shall we say? Nightclub. Yes, yes. Retford is very yes. quaint in lots of ways. It's very homely. It so lovely. I it think. does. Yes. yes. They also support an orchestra. I don't know whether many people oh, know. Right. It's fairly new. Uh, the um, NMTO, Northern Musical Theatre Orchestra, oh. and musicians from far and wide volunteer in that oh, really? and practice throughout the year. Uh, and it's run um, by a musical director who actually directs stage shows in London. And he was a local person who lived at Worksop originally, so I think he came through the, the uh, youth theatre part of, of uh, the Majestic. So it's still supported very well um, by the community, but also it supports in its turn, which Great. is really well, lovely. Let's just hope, fingers crossed, when we get through COVID and Corona, oh, that we can all yes, it will be lovely. It and get some it shows will be back lovely. on and come and see them. Yes. That'll be lovely, won't it? Yes. Yeah. just a short walk up from Bridgegate and I've come to this beautiful church, St Michael's. What's so unique about this wonderful church? Well St Michael's is a very interesting church. It's probably the prettiest church in mm. Retford and it's one of 15 listed buildings within West Retford. Wow, great. And yeah, so it, it, it's got a, a lot of character about it and it's always been a feature of this part of town. Yeah, so what's so special about the building itself, about the spire and the well, what, what's of particular interest is the spire with, which is um, sat on a square tower. So yeah. you've actually got, if you look at it, you've got a square tower with an octagonal spire going up from it. Wow. And with some flying buttresses that support it that's oh, called yes. brooch architecture right. and it, it, it's been described as a poem in stone by a well-known architect. Um, it, it's certainly a very distinctive building mm. and uh, it was mentioned by Pevsner in his uh, summary of uh, listed buildings around the country but it's got a particular feature is all the crockets that go up yeah. Um, the, is that what they're the called? The technical yes, term of the, crockett? It, it is indeed. And um, it, it's just one of the many th features of this particular church that's been a place of worship here um, for years and years and years. Wow. So, yeah. So is there any particular features, any gargoyles or anything well, that stand out particularly? Well, th there is. There's a lovely gargoyle that's round on the other side of the church. Oh, wow. And it's well worth looking at. Oh, let's go and have a look. Yeah, fine. Come on then, brilliant. Uh, OK. The, oh, look. <laughs> the gargoyle here is supposedly um, one of the brethren of Retford, which um, the Trinity Hospital, which was built by the Darrell family, mm. who in, in 1659, um, they, they have 12 uh, brethren who um, are poor and uh, they have to meet certain means tests. Oh, and uh, they, they're, they're in the building that's not far from here. Um, the, and it was built in connection uh, with um, by John Darrell, right. who was the son of uh, Edward Darrell, whose uh, tomb is in the church. Oh, right. Yeah. And uh, so they're not the prettiest of <laughs> it's things. One but, of the lightness. But, oh, well, who, who knows? I who don't knows? think I'd be but entirely flattered. No, <laughs> but I think they were put there for a particular purpose. And one of the other things that's of interest here is the inverted broadstone that used oh. to be 
um, and you can see down over here and, and it used to be um, on the boundary wall and uh, so that stood on the wall and that that of course was of interest because uh, during the plague uh, people who uh, had coins they could wash them in vinegar and uh, therefore purify them and uh, which at this period of covid is particularly it's topical. very topical yes Do yeah you think we could reinstate that and get it back in use so we can <laughs> start going back well, to shops and handing over actual cash. Maybe that would be a very good idea. <laughs> wow, I didn't even know there were two broadstones in Redford. Yeah, so That's really interesting. So it, it is, it is, and it's, an, it's unusual. And the fact that it was, uh, it was recited here and inverted, obviously, because mm. so it's stable.